Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is gonna be a get ready with me. I'm gonna share how I curl my hair with you. I'm gonna share my go-to fragrance combination right now and we're gonna do a quick makeup look together. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of makeup and beauty content here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but I will be posting every single day in December. So if you're interested in a get ready with me, definitely keep watching. And let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing I'm going to share with you is my go-to fragrance combination right now, and they are from Dossier Fragrances. I've shared them a few times here on my channel. If you're not familiar with Dossier, they reproduce very high-end luxurious fragrances for a fraction of the price. So the fragrances range anywhere from $29 to $50 instead of $100 or more, which is fantastic. They have all kinds of deals on their website and one of the great things that I love about them is you actually get a fragrance mini sample with your order. So you get a mini version of whichever fragrance you order so you can try it first and then if you end up not liking it you can send back your full size within 30 days for an exchange or a return which is really nice because sometimes you just don't know if you're going to like something until you try it out. So I love that they include this mini with your orders. I actually typically wear two fragrances at once. I rarely ever only wear one thing and I kind of switch up the combo depending on the time of year and what kind of mood I'm in. But lately the one that I'm going for is Floriental Coconut. This is inspired by Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, which is such an expensive perfume, but it smells incredible. It smells very, a little bit beachy with that coconut kind of smell to it, but it also has some jasmine, it has some pistachio. It's a very warm smell, which is what I like for more of the fall winter seasons. So I've been using that with a spray of Woody Sage, which was also inspired by a designer fragrance, Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt, which is such a classic. So many people love that one. The Woody Sage masculine kind of scent mixed with coconut is my go-to combo because I actually really, as I get older, love the smell of coconuts. I don't know what it is, but I like that more and more as I get older. And this time of year with that woodsy masculine type smell, I love one spray of each and that's been my go-to combo recently. If you want to try Dossier for yourself, I do have a discount code that I'll list in my description box that you can use. They're always adding new fragrances to the website as well, so definitely go on and check it out. Thank you so much to Dossier for partnering with me on this portion of the Get Ready With Me. All right, so I wanted to talk to you about my hair for a minute because I get a lot of questions about my hair. I don't talk about hair a whole lot. I'm actually not very good with hair. I do pretty much the same things to my hair all the time. And, but I figured I'd share it with you because I do get a lot of questions about it. So typically I wash my hair, I would say once, sometimes twice a week. It just kind of depends on usually my filming kind of schedule because I try not to wash my hair constantly because I have kind of drier hair type. I have very thick hair, very coarse hair, and it definitely has a tendency to get dry. So I try to wash it very sparingly but typically I will wash it and then let it air dry to like I would say like 80-85% before I go in and blow dry it but what I've been using lately is this I mentioned this in my last favorites video it's by Biolage and it's the all-in-one coconut infusion multi benefit spray I am still obsessed with this. In fact, I was just looking, I can kind of see through this bottle and more than half of this is gone, which is saying something for me because I typically will switch out my hair products. I get kind of bored with hair things, but I've consistently been using this. So I actually washed my hair last night and I let it air dry and I just spray this all over my head. I mean, I spray a lot of it because like I said, I have a lot of hair and my hair can take a lot of product. So I spray that all over, let it air dry, and then I go in with this. So this is the Amica 
uh, dryer brush. I don't even know what it's called. But this is what I use to blow dry my hair. And I basically section it off and blow dry it. This one has two settings. It has a high and a low setting. I typically use the higher setting first and kind of go over my head quickly with it. And then I change it to the lower setting and I go section by section and blow dry my hair. I think if you've never tried a blow dry brush like this for someone that has a lot of hair, especially if you have thick hair, I feel like these blow drying brushes are key <laughs> because when I have, if you have the amount of hair that I have, it is very hard to hold a hair dryer, hold a round brush and blow dry in sections. When you have so much hair, it, it's not easy. But I did want to curl it with you today. So typically I will wash my hair at night, let it air dry, blow dry it before I go to bed, and then the next day I will either straighten it or curl it. I've been doing straight a little bit more recently, but in the past I've always been like a curled hair kind of person. Um, so basically what I do is, let me grab this. So before I use a curling iron on it, now I'm going to be honest, sometimes if I'm in a hurry and I'm just trying to get it done, I don't do this. But I try to apply this to my hair because I do think it makes a difference. It's by Bubble and Bumble. It's the BB Glow Thermal Protection Mist. And basically this is a heat protectant for your hair after it's already dried. So this also has heat protectant in it, but I use this when my hair is wet. Whereas with this, I apply it when it's dry. So I apply a good bit of this because like I said, I have a lot of hair and uh, I obviously have color treated hair. So I do try to use two different heat protectants on it. I just, I don't know if it makes a difference. Hopefully it does. But I spray that and then I just kind of run through it with my fingers. Um, and kind of let it feel dry again because you don't want to curl your hair uh, when it feels the least bit damp because you will damage your hair. So I just kind of run through it with that and just let it sit for a few minutes. So it feels nice and dry. So I'm going to go ahead and section it off. So if you don't have as much hair as me, this is not gonna take you as long, I would assume. But like I said, I have um, a lot of hair. So pretty much everything I do, I have to do in sections like this. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. So I usually tie it up like this and then I just start and go from each side. So I go through it usually with a brush like this and honestly this is probably too big of a layer I try to keep little tiny sections of hair but oh well we're just gonna go with this so usually start on my left side it probably looks like my right side to you and this is what I use I use this babyless curling iron it's just a traditional curling iron with a clamp and I think it's one and a half inches. Now, I will say, I don't know if it's because this curling iron has gotten old because I've had it for probably about four years now, maybe five years because um, I had it when I was still in college. I know that. Um, and I find that my curls do not hold as well as they used to. And my hair is actually very wavy naturally. So it actually typically holds a curl very well because it has that kind of natural texture to it. But lately, for some reason, my curls are not holding as well. And the only thing I can think of is, I don't know if this um, curling iron is not heating it evenly or I don't know, but I used to have no trouble with curls lasting in my hair because my hair already has a good bit of turn to it. Um, but that is something I have been noticing. So I don't know that I would recommend that 
babyless iron, although it might not even be the iron. I don't know what it is. Um, cause I loved that iron when I first got it, but like I said, it's older. I do this all the way around my head. Sometimes I alternate directions. Sometimes I don't, um, like today I'm probably not going to. I don't really find that it makes that much of a difference. Um, but yeah, I do this all over my head. I basically open the clamp, start it up pretty high, and then curl it, pull it through, curl it again, pull it through, curl it again, and then I try to leave my hair out at the end because I do not want to damage my ends if possible. And then I used to, a long time ago actually, I used to go in right away and brush out the curls because I do not like, I don't like my hair to look really curly. I like it to look wavy, like beach waves almost. Um, and I used to go in right away and brush through it and that's how I would get those waves. But now I've been trying to let my hair sit for a little while before I go in and brush it out since I've been having trouble with the curls not lasting as well. Um, so I'm gonna go around my head and I just go section by section like this. But yeah, I'm, I get a lot of questions about my hair. Um, I'm actually trying to let it grow out really long again. I cut it a few months ago um, and it was pretty short. It was like shoulder length, which is pretty short for me. I've typically always had long hair, um, but now I want it to be long again. So I'm trying to uh, let it grow out. All right, so I'm probably gonna speed through this until I get to like the very top layer and then I'll just kind of show you how I do the front pieces, but that's pretty much it. I do the same thing all over my head. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you when I do the front pieces. Okay, so I have, I'm kind of to this front piece on this side. So typically, this is really the only part I do differently, but I take the iron and instead of using the clamp, I wrap it like this. Hopefully you can see. And I hold it for just a few seconds and then let it go and it kind of helps it drape back that way. But that's really the only thing I do differently. Um, and that just kind of helps that front piece kind of fall away from my face. Um, but that's about it. Everything else is the same. Okay, so I curled my whole head and now I'm just gonna take my brush and brush out the curls. I actually let it sit for like 10 minutes after I finished, so it's been a little while. And I just kind of Take my hairbrush and lightly brush out the curls. And then the last thing that I do is I normally take some kind of like texturizer spray. I don't really need it because I have a lot of volume in my hair anyway, but I usually take something like this. This is from Amika. It's an anti-humidity spray because my hair is very, um, very prone to frizziness. You may or may not be able to tell, but it's, I don't have silky smooth hair. I have very frizzy hair. Okay, my camera ran out of memory, so I'm not sure where I left off, but I brushed out my hair and then I used a little bit of this Amica anti-humidity spray. Spray it all over my head and that's about it. So this is pretty much what I always do to my hair. I either curl it like this or sometimes if I'm in the mood, I straighten it instead of curl it. And then once it gets kind of dirty and greasy and I'm not quite ready to 
wash it again. That's when I bring out the slicked back bun that you guys see a lot. So that's pretty much how I wear my hair all the time. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I figured I would go ahead and show you and kind of talk about my hair a little bit because I do get asked about my hair and what I use and things pretty frequently. I'm just clipping my hair out of the way and we're gonna do a little bit of makeup. I'm gonna do my brows first and I'm just gonna do my ColourPop brow wax. So I'm just gonna speed through this. You guys know what I do for my brows, pretty much always the same thing. I just take the wax and brush it through and then I'll go in and fill them in. Probably gonna use my NYX Lift and Snatch brow pin today and lightly fill them in. Okay, so I did my brows and now we're gonna do corrector. We're gonna use Charlotte Tilbury Magic Vanish and I'm actually gonna use both of my shades. I have medium, which is what I normally use, and then I also have fair. Um, so I'm going to use just a little bit of both. I'm going to take medium under the eyes like this. I'm going to use mostly the shade medium, but I'm going to pop just a little bit of fair in the inner corner. I actually just filmed a concealer and corrector declutter that will be coming here in the next few days. I'm going to be doing a lot of declutters in December since I'll be posting every day and I just kind of want to go through my collection and clean things out and make sure I just have kind of a fresh start going into the new year. And then I'm just going to take a small little concealer brush and tap this in. For foundation today, I'm gonna to use Bite Beauty, the Changemaker Micellar Foundation in the shade L25. I have this in my everyday makeup drawer right now. And I actually was noticing the other day that this is on sale right now at Sephora. I want to say it's like half off. So is the powder that came out with this foundation and I hope that doesn't mean it's being discontinued because I really, I really, really like this foundation. And I'm using a Sigma F80 brush to blend this in. This is the one that came with the Sigma Cinderella set. So I'm filming this video a few days after Thanksgiving. So if you are in the United States, I hope you had a really good, happy Thanksgiving with your family or your friends. Can't believe it's almost December. I feel like this year has gone by really fast. For concealer, I'm going to go in with this one. This is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer in the shade Wheat. This used to be my favorite a while ago. I kind of forgot about it until I saw it when I was doing my concealer declutter. This is a really, really nice concealer. So I added just a bit of it to my face. And I'm just tapping this in with my foundation brush and then we'll blend in the concealer. So I'm gonna use my Sigma F03 brush as always. And then I'm just gonna go right under my eyes with a sponge that's barely damp and Make sure there's no excess, and then I'll just go around the rest of my face with it too. Okay, now I'm going to do something I don't do a whole lot. I'm going to take the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Normally, I apply this under foundation, but today I kind of want to try 
applying it over foundation and just see how I like it. I don't know why I always do it first, because really you're supposed to be able to do all of those things with this. You're supposed to be able to apply it under foundation, on top of foundation, mixed in with foundation, but I always typically use it with or as a primer, but I don't know, kind of in the mood to do it like this today. This is the shade number two. Okay, now I'm gonna quickly just set my face with the Bite powder. Like I said, this is also um, on sale at Sephora right now. I'm not sure why. But this is a nice powder. It does obviously really well with the Bite foundation. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of that powder and tap it under my eyes. For bronzer, I'm gonna use my Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade 00, or let's see, 01. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit of that with this Real Techniques multitask brush. And I'm doing this new tapping method. I talked about this already, I think, but I was watching uh, Makeup by Mario the other day doing Carly Bible's makeup, and he was talking about how he applies bronzer by pressing it, not by swiping it. For blush, I am kind of obsessed with this. You guys, this Clinique Cheek Pop Blush in Nude Pop. I really want another one of these. I have been loving this. It's like the perfect blush because it's so neutral that it goes with everything. So you can literally wear it with whatever you want. Okay, so I primed my eyes, and I think today I'm just going to use a little bit of cream eyeshadow. I actually had someone ask me just a few videos ago, now I can't remember your name, but you asked if I would use the Bobbi Brown shadow sticks in a video, so I figured I would do that today. So I'm actually, first, before I use the Bobbi Brown, I'm going to take this. This is by Charlotte Tilbury. It's the eyes to mesmerize in the shade Jean. So it's just a really light champagne color and I'm gonna actually go really all over my lid and bring it up slightly. These are really, really beautiful from Charlotte Tilbury. I've never used another formula that was like this. It's very kind of a whipped texture. I have two of them. also have Marie Antoinette, which I also really like, but basically just gonna apply this all over. So I have three of the Bobbi Brown eyeshadow sticks. I'll swatch them for you so you can see. I have the shade Taupe, the shade Nude Beach, and the shade Golden Bronze which is probably my favorite one, but I figured I'll swatch them for you. So we have new, or we have taupe, nude beach, and golden bronze. So golden bronze has, uh, it's kind of a metallic finish. Taupe and nude beach are matte finishes. So these, one thing to note is a little bit of these goes a long way and I typically try to apply them pretty sparingly because they are more pigmented than you might think. So I think I am actually going to take taupe and I can't remember if I've gone straight onto my eye with this in the past or if I've gone in with a brush. So to be safe, I think I'm going to take a brush. And this is just a big fluffy eyeshadow brush. And like you can see, see how much pigment that was? And I did not use a lot of product. So I'm gonna go onto the other eye. So again, that was the shade Taupe. 
by Bobbi Brown and then I think I'm just gonna take golden bronze so this is the kind of metallic -y one this is so beautiful I love this color so with this I'm actually going to draw directly on my lash line but really just the outer half and I'm gonna do one eye at a time and then I'm just gonna take this this is a Marc Jacobs eyeshadow brush and I'm literally just going back and forth, kind of blending it out a little bit. And then kind of flick what's left, kind of upward onto the lid. Kind of over where we put that jean shade from Charlotte Tilbury. And this golden bronze is nice because you can make it as subtle or as dark as you want. So I didn't apply very much. So on me, it's a pretty light bronze color, but you can apply this like all over your eyelid and get much darker or a smokier effect. I actually have a few of the Laura Mercier caviar sticks also, and they're very, very similar to Bobbi Brown. They're both really great. Um, you really can't go wrong with either. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I don't know that I've ever even used this in a video, but this is one of the Armani eye tints in the shade number 12. And it's kind of just a really, really light shimmer. So I'm just taking a little bit right down the center of the eyelid. And then I'm just going to take that brush and tap it in just to add a little bit of brightness right in the center. I'm going to take golden bronze now and apply a little bit of this on the outer half of the bottom lash line, like not very much at all. I barely touched my eye. And then I'm going to take that same Marc Jacobs brush and just smudge that out. And one final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Milani bronzer that we used on my face and I'm just going to add a little bit of that to the crease just to kind of tie everything together. And then I'll take what's left under my eyes and go over that golden bronze and that is really it you guys and it's so easy so quick and then you could totally skip this if you want um, but I think I'm just going to use a tiny bit of my Charlotte Tilbury eye powder pencil and I'm going to apply that kind of over where we put that golden bronze on the top lash line just to intensify it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna use that same Marc Jacobs brush and just lightly go over it, kind of smudge it out. And for mascara, I'm gonna use the Rare Beauty Mascara. I have to say, I think this Rare Beauty Mascara is my favorite mascara of this year by far. I have been wearing this pretty much constantly since I started using it when I filmed the video with that Rare Beauty holiday kit. And I'm telling you, this stuff is so black. It lengthens, but it also adds volume, and I have yet to see any smudging anywhere from this mascara, and I've worn it to the gym. I've worn it on walks, I've worn it all day long, and I do not notice any transfer, which is phenomenal. So I have to say, you guys, I think this is a product that has gotten some hype, and I actually think it's it's true. It has really impressed me. Like, look at that. It's really good. And lastly, for the lips, I'm not really sure what I want to do. I pulled out a bunch of different things, um, but I think I want to use this lip pencil from Morphe. 
This is the shade Sweet Tea. It's a really nice brown. I kind of forgot that I bought this. I saw it in my drawer and I kind of wanted to use it. So I just kind of very lightly applied that. It's very brown, so I tried to go a little sparingly with it. And let's see. I think I might use this. This is Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution in the shade Very Victoria. Kind of a deeper brownie nude. So I like to just kind of tap this on so I don't get too much. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this lip brush and kind of blend it, blend the edges at least. I think I'm just gonna apply a little bit of Persona lip gloss in the shade Honey. So I feel like, oh yeah, this will go well. Oh yeah, that's a pretty combo. And that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this style of get ready with me and hearing about fragrance, hair, and makeup too. I am really looking forward to posting every day in December. I hope you guys are excited. Make sure to leave any video requests down below in the comments that you want to see from me in the month of December. And I will also list and link all of these products and my dossier link and code for you to use if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe and stick around for more videos. Also go follow me over on Instagram at simply.blair. I will see you guys in my next video. Remember, simply be you. Bye.